get my big shears. First thing we're going to cut out is our pattern for the top. Okay? So, I'm going to take my pins out of this side. Well, you know what? Let's do our back first. And I forgot to do something. But let us connect our line right here for the back seam. That's what you're going to do next. Gonna make our waistline, our high waist. Why do I keep doing that? Our high waistline up here. Hopefully that's even. Not doesn't matter now. I already dropped the dog on line. All right. So let me pull that apart. Okay, I got some better scissors, some non-fabric scissors, so I can cut through this duct tape without feeling guilty. So, let's do the back first. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the side seam here. Duct tape and all which, uh, this sucks. Okay, now this is the tricky part. With the back shoulder, if I were you, what I would do is just go, see if you can see this, I would go right where the original seam line is, okay, I would go right there, and I would cut there, up under all the ruffles that you had pinned there, right along that line. So that makes our back. Now, if I were you, I would leave this fringe here at the top, this two inch fringe, and fold this down. And I would cut along this black seam that I made up here. Original. Now you can take all your pins out of the top, take your top off of the thing. breast piece should look, your, your chest piece, your bodice, front bodice should look like this. Your front bodice should look like this. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you, will, hopefully you all can see this. The very first thing we're going to do is we have to trace our split line 
on to from the front on to the backs to the back skirt so we're gonna put these wrong side together that's the back this is the crazy zany front Okay, now that we have our center seams matching, uh, I don't know if you could see this faint blue line that I made with Taylor's chalk, but we're going to change that right now. We're going to make it into a red line. Um, I'm going to use my Taylor's curve, my French curve. Just to make it a nice little curve. I don't want it too curvy. But let's say let's be conservative with our split. I know I went all the way out here, but if the split is too wide, I can always, I mean too shallow, I can always widen the split or deepen the split. But if I deepen the split too much, I can't, I can't, um, well I can, but it will make it very difficult to, to add material. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. gonna make a red mark here hopefully you all can see that that red line anyway that's my split line and I really should use Taylor's chalk for this so I can show you Where I can show you where that split is going to be attached on the back side, which is right here. Okay. So, there it is. Uh, let me look at the picture right quick. <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're just going to pivot this. Now that we got where it's gonna be at the top we're just gonna pivot it so that the side seam side seam meets up and we don't want that that split line to be so deep in the back because we want to be able to sit on some dress when we go to sit down so what we're gonna do is we're going to just simply hold our curve there. Hopefully you can see this. And we're just going to flip this fabric here. And we're just going to make our marking from that red line down up under there. Actually, we're going to kind of curve it a little right here because we want our split to start there same place in the front as in the back 
and we're just gonna line right along our curve and hopefully on the other side <coughs> well it's very faint but it's there okay right there Finish. Finish this off. Okay. 